Hey guys, this is Voitech from Jolly Monster Studio, and before we get into the rest of the tutorial, I just wanted to say a great big thank you to everyone who reached out over the last little while. Um, I didn't realize I was going to receive such a positive response from the couple of um, written tutorials I put up there, but you guys saw it, you jumped all over it, you provided me with positive feedback, comments, questions, criticisms, and it's fantastic. Thank you guys very much for looking over my content. It makes me feel encouraged and motivated to keep going. Um, as part of that, one of the questions that kept surfacing was, hey, do I plan on doing any video tutorials? And the answer is yes, as you can see by this poorly put together YouTube clip. But rest assured, I will work on my video and audio editing skills and keep providing this content to you. So keep checking in. If anything, just to watch me embarrass myself online. Okay, so let's get into it. We're gonna start off by creating just a test project. This will showcase how you can flip between these two IDs. So all you need to do is just create a new C++ project. I'm using the first person shooter template. You don't have to. Um, just pick one that you're comfortable with um, for this exercise. Now, there's a lot of compilation steps and a lot of just waiting, you know, watching paint dry type events as part of this workflow. So I'm gonna fast forward through all of that. Um, like I said, if you want some more details, please check out the links in the description. So our project is just starting to generate and let's fast forward to the next steps. Okay, so Visual Studio is up and running, and we are just going to step in here for a second to set up our debug message that we are going to be using for our um, way of just ensuring that our compilation is working between CLion, Visual Studio Code, and Visual Studio. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop open the projectile class, and in the on hit event, I'm just going to introduce a debug message. Nothing too fancy, but something that will let us know that things are actually working. So here you can watch me struggle with autocomplete um, because Visual Assist is a little bit clunky, um, kind of on the onset. It does speed up a little bit um, once things get more comfortable, but just bear with me here for a second while I prep this debug message. So we have our debug message turned on and we're just gonna make sure that it's working as expected. So it's in our on hit event. It should only be triggered. Oh, there we go. So every time we hit the box, we should see our magenta messaging show up in the top left hand corner. Cool, mm, bouncy balls. Anyway, on to getting it back to um, the state of not having the debug message and this way we can just turn it on and off between our id switches so i'm just going to recompile make sure that things are turned off again oh that's a leftover and there we go looks good okay on to the next step so we'll be able to shut down uh, visual studio it is no longer required so there we go, that's closed. And now we are going to go to our Unreal Engine editor to editor preferences. And on the left-hand side under source code, we are going to select Visual Studio Code. So you'll see a number of different IDs already listed in there, C Lion being one of them, as well as the various flavors of Visual Studio. But for right now, we'll go with Visual Studio Code. So select that. Close down the editor preferences window and here I'm going to show you kind of what happens to your folder structure when you do use different editors. As you can see on the right hand side there, there's your .vs folder and your solution file. As you will notice when we modify our IDE, there'll be a number of additional files generated, directories, things like that. This will be helpful for you to understand how the project structure is broken out. And also, if you ever need to clean things up and go back to Visual Studio, what files you want to delete. So, in order to switch the IDE, let's go back to the Unreal Engine and select File, 
Generate Visual Studio Code project. Once you click that button, it's going to take a second and you should notice on your folder view that a handful of new folders and files were created, specifically the .workspace file as well as the .vscode directory. So great, you now have a Visual Studio project. To open up Visual Studio Code, uh, pop open to your editor, file, open Visual Studio Code, and here we are. Now you may notice that my IDE has a handful of uh, messages and plugins <clears throat> that you may not have. If you like more details, again, go back to the links in the description. Since everything looks good with our setup, we are now going to just pop open our projectile class again. Um, you'll have the source code navigation tree on the left hand side. And I'm just going to turn our debug message back on. With our messaging turned on, I am now going to hit Control Shift B to bring up the build target or build task um, window. And we are going to select the same task that we would have in our Visual Studio, which is the editor uh, debug game 64 bit build, and simply execute the build process. As you can see, compilation goes through, um, no errors, no runtime exceptions as far as we can see. We'll pop open our Unreal Engine and we should now see our debug message show up in the top left hand corner again. There we go. So like that, you've switched IDs. You are now using Visual Studio Code. Wonderful. Life is so much better. So uh, to get things back to um, our lab state, we are going to comment out the message, rerun our build execution task, and just validate that things are back up and uh, cleaned up in the editor. And part of this is testing, part of this is just me having fun with <laughs> the first person shooter template. So I do apologize for the extraneous um, ball launching. Okay, so that looks still pretty good. Let's get back into switching to C-Lion now. So similar steps to before, we can shut down Visual Studio Code. We are no longer going to be using it for this exercise. Um, and let's go back to the Unreal Editor, back to Editor Preferences, Source Code, and let's pick C-Lion. So similar to our initial exercise, um, we are going to look at the folder structure just to showcase uh, what C-Line is going to generate. And as you've noticed, I deleted the existing Visual Studio Code directory and file just to kind of clean things up after myself. So to regenerate, or sorry, to generate the C-Line project, you go to File, Generate C-Line Project. It's going to take a quick second and you should see a handful of other directories become available, um, specifically the .idea folder, uh, cmakelists.txt file, and as we drill down into um, our intermediary project files um, structure, you'll see all of these cmake um, files. These are going to be used for allowing CLion to interface with the build tools and allow compilation and things like that to function correctly. To launch C-Lion, similar to Visual Studio Code, file, open C-Lion. This will take a second and eventually you should see it launch. Now with C-Lion open, you will notice there's a couple of exceptions right off the bat that may be concerning. Um, disregard the update for now. Also disregard the misc XML exception. This seems to be something to do with how um, JetBrains, the company that produces the IDEA suite, of which C-Lion is one of the many tools in their stack, um, there's problems with encoding, it's prevalent in IntelliJ and various other tools that they produce. So it's nothing to be too concerned about. Having said that, the next step with the CMake list TXT file is a bit concerning. This seems to be a bug that is generated from the Unreal side. Um, I believe there's a ticket around this that Epic may be addressing in 4.21. Um, 
Now to correct this issue, all you really have to do is look for any um, syntax highlighting in the CMake file. You'll notice there's a bunch of slashes that are not escaped. Um, it looks like when the project is generated, there's a bug that doesn't escape things properly, probably using you know OSX or Linux type encoding, which is why we're seeing these paths get a little messed up. So basically double slash all the things that are highlighted as red and you should be good to go. Once you are done, you would right click on the CMake list TXT file to regenerate the project. Now, this is going to introduce a secondary issue, which looks like this. So here's the error, and it basically prevents you from generating your project definition, which prevents you from building your Unreal project and no one's happy. What you'll catch from the exception is the CMake regeneration is trying to use the debug build target, which for whatever reason doesn't work 100%. So to correct it, you would go into settings, um, build execution deployment, CMake, and then change your build type from debug to release. So let's rebuild it. We should see this thing become successful very shortly and we should be back up and running. As your build finishes, you will notice in the bottom left-hand corner that CLion prompts you about your sources not being available to its indexing scope. Just basically saying that they're located outside the project directory. And what that really means is you just need to expand your project folder definitions, navigate down to your source folder. There we go. Right-click on your project source folder Go to mark as project source and headers, and that's really it. Now, all of your source code, including the Unreal source code, will be indexed by CLion, and things like IntelliSense, Autocomplete, become just much more intuitive and easy to use. Okay, cool. So, now let's move on to just showcasing that compilation with CLion works just as well as the other two IDs we just covered. So with our IDE open, we are now going to modify our projectile class from within CLion. I'm just going to make sure our editor is still okay. Yep, looks good. Okay. Um, one thing you will notice as you uncomment out um, our message line is CLion will try to be clever and provide you with autocomplete for headers you might have omitted. Now, because it hasn't still completed its full indexing, it is going to recognize my G Engine class um, that it comes from somewhere else, and it will not correctly associate the automatic header inclusion. So by just adding in engine.h manually, um, it's still highlighting it as red, but when I now navigate into it, it's correctly referencing the class and where it came from. And those are just things that will go away over rebuilds and reopening of the editor, things like that. So, similar to our Visual Studio Code and Visual Studio, our build targets are automatically picked up through the CMake generation process. They are available at the top part of the menu structure. And again, we're gonna select the editor 164 debug game build mode and just regenerate our project class. So our build just finished. We're gonna go back into our Unreal Editor and launch a couple of projectiles. There we go. Okay, so that looks really good. Now, the last thing I wanna show you is the compilation execution right from Unreal um, Engine, or sorry, the Unreal Editor. So if you don't like Visual Studio, CLion, or Visual Studio Code, and you wanna use, I don't know, Emacs, Notepad++, hell, Microsoft Word. All you need to do is ensure that your header and source files are updated correctly, and then you can trigger the compilation process from within the Unreal Editor. You will notice in the output log that the compilation process has been triggered. This is going to take uh, just a little bit of time, but once complete, you should be able to get back into your game, and now the debug message is no longer available. So as you guys can see, you have a multitude of ways of dealing with the Unreal Engine workflow. Whichever IDE you leverage is totally up to you. They're all quite viable. They all have their pros and cons. I suggest you experiment. 
and see what workflow works for you. Thank you for tuning in. I really appreciate you sticking through this uh, tutorial and hope to see you next time.